excited to be here again with my brother Roy. I've been watching Roy's videos and one of the things that's come up for me is like Roy has such a scientific way of seeing things but I have a completely different way of seeing things and I'm not quite grasping everything Roy's been sharing but I want to because I can feel that this is really powerful information. So I asked Roy if I could do another interview with him and let's just dive into some of these things you've been talking about and teaching Roy. And I want to ask questions is almost like as if I'm uh, channeling your audience, right? Sure. And, Perfect. And let's see if we can dive deeper into some of these concepts that you're teaching, because I'm sure I'm not the only one that wants to understand them better. And that doesn't sure. have a naturally gifted scientific way of thinking about things. Sure. Great. So, so I guess what I'm, I'm wanting is like, what have you, what have you been diving into? Like, I know you've talked about the pH and some of the other, like you had chemical stuff like where what sounds the most fun for you to start where does well i guess maybe the the, the best place to start would be the question that everybody asks me the most is drinking pure water or drinking alkaline water yes i keep asking that question because uh there's so much um stuff on the internet you can find an answer to anything that you want but it's just marketing and so to get the truth everybody keeps asking and so i was trying to explain if pure water is seven on the pH scale. And so the pH scale goes from zero to 14. And so seven is the new, is the center and neutral. If you go lower than seven, that is acidic. And if okay. you go above seven, then that is considered base or alkali. Okay. And so okay. you're talking about the, uh, the pH of our bodies, correct? Or just well, pH the pH in scale in general. Okay. We all um, use the pH uh, scale in every, every everyday life, in science, in health, in, in eating, everything. But in order to understand that, you have to understand the original pH scale of 0 to 14. And that okay. essentially, because hydrogen is the most uh, abundant element in the on the planet you know, or in the universe, okay. that, uh, that scale of pH is very important. And essentially, it that scale shows you, it's quite complicated, but to, to, to simplify it, it shows you that if, if you're at seven and neutral, your hydrogen ion at that point is neutral. It doesn't have an electrostatic uh, charge, either of the alkali or of the acid. Okay. So you're following just neutral. So far? And, and yeah, I'm following you so far, but where's the healthy place for a body to be? And why would you want one versus another? Okay. So the healthy place for a body to be is the, if we're, there's a lot of different fluids in the body. But mm -hmm. the blood is the most important. So okay. the blood needs to stay at pH of 7 to 7.3. Okay. And so so a little bit more onto the pH scale, just so that you can understand. When you go to 7 as a neutral point, if you're dropping down to 6 on the acid side, that is times more acidic than the neutral one. And then 5 oh. is also 100 times more, more acidic than 7. Dang. Because okay. it, to simplify that... If you take between seven and six, there's 10 intermediator levels. We go 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, all the way up. And every point more concentrated of acidic. Does that make sense? Right. Yes, so, it does. So if you get all the way down to one versus seven, you are extremely, you've, you've exponentially comp, you know, compounded that all the way down. Yeah. And yeah. going up on the alkali side, it's the same. So okay. you start and jumping in. And the all. acidic is very, is, I mean, no, we need some acidity in our body, but the acidic is very unhealthy. Incorrect. Incorrect. Okay, so me, this is a huge misnomer stubborn. on a lot of people's understandings because they hear that our bodies need to be alkaline. And so they, they believe that we need to put alkaline stuff into the body, but that's wrong. So our body is designed with this, uh, it's called the Krebs cycle. It's a, uh, I've talked about it a little bit before, but, but the the real name for it is called the citric acid cycle. So our okay. bodies basically have a citric citric acid factory. Everything that we eat, 
we put in there and it runs it through the citric acid cycle. So it lowers the pH of everything we eat. Okay. So going through that, but that's how it processes everything. So once it's gone- through, because of our stomach acids? Um, no, the stomach acids- the, well, the stomach acids do lower it. Yes. Okay. So they lower it. They get it prepared. They get all the processing done so that it can get sent into the citric acid cycle and not uh, take a huge draw on that citric acid cycle. Okay. Because the stomach acids are stronger than that citric acid cycle. Just okay. to give you an idea, citric acid is about three on the pH. Hydrochloric acid or stomach acid is between 1.2 or 1.5 and 2. Okay. So basically, it's the lowest- in our, in our body. And so it prepares everything that we eat through an acid solution, okay. but our body, then it, then it bumps it up into the citric acid cycle. And then our body looks at it, sees what it is and sees what it needs, what chemicals it needs to produce in order to send it to the blood or send it to the brain or send it to wherever. If the body is functioning properly, then the blood can hold a pH of seven to 7.3. Even okay. though we're eating acidic stuff, it doesn't matter because the citric acid cycle fixes all that if it's if we're in a healthy body. Now, where people get lost is they say, well, my body's too acidic. Well, if you eat things that that make the citric acid cycle have to produce more citric acid in order to process it, like a great big T-bone steak or something like that, it yeah. has to produce a tremendous amount of citric acid in order to process that meat, to break it down, to extract the amino acids. Really, all it's looking to do is to get the amino acids and some carbohydrates out of that steak. The rest of it has to figure out what it's going to do with it uh, and process it. Okay. So the more things that you eat that create uh, the injection of citric acid, the more our bodies can't counteract that and become an alkaline. Okay. So that that's kind of going way off. Into, oh yes, it throws you way off balance. So now let's go back to the water. If people are trying to get out of an acid state by putting alkaline in the water, what happens is when they drink that alkalinity that's in the water, it goes down in and it neutralizes the stomach acids, or it tries to neutralize the stomach acids. Well, that is making that vicious cycle of being inflamed and and too much acid already. It, it's making it worse. Because now the gastric juices are not pure. They've been counter-affected, so they're closer to neutral. So now oh, they're wow. higher than the citric acid on the pH scale. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now they can no longer pre-prepare the food or the water that we drink to send it up to the citric acid cycle. And so now the citric acid cycle is getting all this high alkalinity stuff, and it is and it is using up the, the breakdown power of the citric acid. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so now we go back to why pure water is better for you than putting alkalinity. Because if you have pure water, pure water is neutral. It's a seven on the scale, but because it has a positive on the hydrogens and a negative on the oxygen, it wants to absorb anything of those opposite charges. Well, positive and negative are both charges. So right. water is looking to absorb something. And the available molecules that it can absorb are carbon dioxide from the air. Now, okay. carbon dioxide happens to be just one little tiny particle of carbon that connects with two oxygen molecules because it's everywhere in the air, right? So the carbon particle floating around is anything that's burned out of a chimney or burned out of a car exhaust pipe or anything like that is that's where the carbon comes from. Follow okay. me so far? So the, so the carbon I particles are floating through the air. They pick up two oxygen molecules and now we have carbon dioxide, right? Okay. It wants to connect to the water. As soon as it connects to the water, now water is no longer H2O. It's still pure, but now it's H2CO3 because the H2O had one oxygen molecule. The carbon dioxide has two. But when they combine, the three oxygens want to connect, having the carbon be the center. And we have two little hydrogen ions still off to the side. So that's the important part is we still only have the two hydrogen ions. Okay. When we drink that, our bodies are made of carbon. So it understands how to deal with that carbon. And we can explain how it does get rid of the carbon. Well, basically, as it runs through the, through the body, then we breathe out any extra carbon. 
that may be there oh. as the form of carbon dioxide. That's what we okay. exhale. So we're okay. breathing. Let me see if I'm following you. So we're breathing in the carbon dioxide. Correct. And when it in, in ha um, connects well, with the Well, sorry, pure we're water. breathing in oxygen. We're breathing in oxygen. Yes. We exhale carbon dioxide. Right. So we're breathing in oxygen, which has the the molecules. Tell me the molecules again in the in the oxygen. In the oxygen, you would have a carbon molecule and two oxygen molecules. Okay. So we have the oxygen and the carbon. Okay. And so then that comes and connects with the pure water, which when you're talking about pure water, that's like RO water or distilled water. Correct? Correct. Yeah. Well, when I'm talking about pure water, it has to be distilled because RO water has a small amount. And so technically it wouldn't be H2O. It might be H2, one calcium or one magnesium. But for, for science, we'll do distilled because it's pure. Okay. So that is typically, it's technically H2O. Okay. Right? So then when they come together, tell me again what happens when okay. they come together. So when you purify the water, you have a molecule of H2O and it's pure. It has a positive charge, two positive charges on one side and a negative charge on the other. And so in the air is carbon dioxide and it's just floating around and there's billion trillions of it. Okay. So the second that this water, it has a charge, right? It's positive and a negative charge, which happens to be carbon dioxide is floating right above it. So the okay. second that this electrostatic connection, it's like a magnet, they stick together. Okay. And when that happens, that's called auto ionization. And that creates carbonic acid. Okay. What's so carbonic, carbonic acid? So carbonic acid is basically H2 CO3. And the okay. reason that that's important is because by, by telling you that it's H2 tells you that it's only got two ions, mm -hmm. one carbon, and three oxygens. So if you only have two hydrogens, when you drink that, your stomach acid, let's just say for a number's sake, has 500,000 hydrogen ions per molecule of okay. stomach acid. When okay. you drink this water, each molecule only has two more hydrogen ions. So it isn't going to make any difference. Well, very minimal difference in 500,000 per yeah. molecule, right? And so this is this is where I'm trying to get drive the point home. That is why it's good to drink pure water because it doesn't dilute the gastric juices in any way because okay. there's only two hydrogen ions. Okay. If you drink anything that's lower on the pH than, for instance, orange juice, one molecule of orange juice, if you could put that into the stomach acids, it's going to add 29,000 hydrogen ions per molecule of orange juice. Okay. And that is adding it on the acid level or the- Correct. The, the more hydrogen ions that you have, the more acidic it goes down. Maybe that's okay. the key point I needed to say. Yeah. So the more hydrogen ions, so that's the pH scale, is the scale of how many ions, if you're seven- and you go this way, it's how many ions can be trapped of hydrogen. Okay. And the more that's trapped, the more it goes down to lower to the acidic side of the scale. Okay. Now, on the other side of this, real quick, so we can finish this, the ions are still present, but in order to raise the pH, we can't just add more hydrogen ions because that lowers it. What okay. we do is the hydrogen ions, they still, they raise the hydrogen ions, but they start to capture oxygen molecules on these hydrogen ions and that raises the ph because oxygen carries a ton of electrons and so the electrons create electronegativity and when the when the oxygen molecules hook to the hydrogen it they have who knows how many electrons spinning orbiting around the outside of that oxygen but they can continually get more and more so the affinity is the ability to hold extra electrons and as you go up that scale, the oxygen has an affinity for electrons. It holds more and more and more and more, but the hydrogen doesn't necessarily change. Okay. Makes sense? Um, not no, that was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> but I'm it trying to explain it. Very a, interesting. I'm trying to explain it. Uh, this many cables in, into one, it, it, it's hard, but I'm just yeah, mostly so trying to give point me it. another example. So the orange juice example helped a lot. So it helped me to understand when you drink orange juice, you actually are dropping down into the more acidic level, right? Correct. Correct. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like we've been thinking about it. Right. Right. Past. It is not a bad thing. And so 
when we drink the orange juice, basically because orange juice is citric acid. That's okay. why it's so good to drink our lemon juice or lemon water in the morning or orange juice is because we are replenishing our citric acid cycle tank. Oh, it goes that's... into the gas. The orange juice goes into the gastric juices in the gastric juices. Like I say, is hydrochloric acid of 1.5 to 2 pH. But mm -hmm. along with that are purified electrolytes that are that that sitting in an acid solution of hydrochloric acid, you get potassium hydrochloride, you get uh, calcium hydrochloride. These are some of our other electrolytes that are very important for the body. They get developed and purified in the gastric juices. So then when we drink citric acid as an orange juice, we are basically filling up our gas tank for the citric acid cycle so that we can eat anything else we want the rest of the day and we'll have enough fuel citric acid fuel to process it interesting okay so what analogy could you give me to help me understand the alkalinity side that you were if we're going to go on the other side of let's say let's take the orange juice and it's the 3.3 and let's throw a whole bunch of oxygen molecules on all those hydrogens okay that it's holding right so it has twenty nine thousand hydrogen mm -hmm. ions Let's just put 29,000 oxygen molecules on those hydrogen ions. That automatically is going to jump the pH to somewhere in the neighborhood of probably nine. Okay. And how do you get those oxygen? Just by breathing? Do we do that by breathing? Or well, no, there... they, in the industry, they have to do it through chemical reactions. Chemical reactions will pick up that, uh, will make the electrons jump. So if you wanted to change the electricity or change the electrons in the orange juice, you could uh, put electro electrodes in the orange juice. So this is what the Kangen machine does, right? The, the okay. Kangen machine actually has two electrodes and they put it in the water and then they energize it. Well, okay. electricity is electrons. And so when they energize through these plates uh, that they have in there, the electrons have nowhere to go. So they go in the water. And mm. when they go in the water, there's also oxygen in the water because we have H2O, right? And so that O part has that negative charge and all these electrons love the oxygen, right? And so they're going to, in the, in the field, you have an outer electron field for the oxygen. They're going to fill up through the electricity. They're going to jump from the plates and into this field that's around the oxygen molecule. So, but they came from electricity. Okay. The problem with electricity producing those is through the metal plates is the... The metal plates are not made to transfer electrons without the electrons of the metal starting to oh. disintegrate and releasing out as well. And that's my problem that I have with those machines that use direct electrolysis because yeah. those free electrons aren't free. They came from the metal. Okay. Some of them came from the metal and they have an affinity for uh, harsher alkalis or whatever the metal is made out of. And those electrons are used to that electrostatic field. And I don't want those in my body. And why? Why? Because they create, if they're used to a negative electrostatic field, as soon as you take that electron off, it has its own field that has now been charged negatively electrostatic. Okay. Electrostatic negative. When I eat that or consume that, that's a free radical. Oh, I mean, it's a basically a free radical is like saying a, a, a city town. Any any radical is a free radical. There are uh, there's positive radicals, there's negative radicals, and there's neutral radicals. A neutral okay. radical doesn't hurt us because it's okay. not looking necessarily to take an electron from a, an important part of our body. Okay, and so the free radicals actually go and they take um, chemicals that we actually need. Correct. Correct. Okay. So and, for and instance, say I, say I ate a spinach leaf and then I drank some alkaline water that I, that was electrically alkaline. Well, that some of those oxygen electrons are going to jump off and potentially into the spinach because the spinach now has full complete profiles and has an open electron field that mm -hmm. those electrons do just want. It's got an open swimming pool, so to speak. Okay. And those electrons want to jump in it. Okay. So those electrons jump in it. And then what happens? Well, it, it taints my beautiful, clean swimming pool of my spinach because okay, these were, that's what I was wanting to get to their electronegative charge where, how they got that electronegative doesn't matter. They're electronegative. Okay. okay. And they, and they're going to, they're going to contaminate my pool of my, of my spinach, of my clean, 
my clean molecule right. of spinach, right? They're going to contaminate. Okay. okay. And so then when you eat that spinach that it has been contaminated, then what happens to what happens? Well, it creates more as the, the, the body's processing that spinach, that one electron that has the electronegativity in there is a free radical. It's going to connect to something that it can connect to and create oxidative stress. Okay. And what does oxidative stress do to your body? Well, it, uh, it obviously it's on a very small uh, scale. So an oxidative stress, when it, when it bumps up to a cell wall, it actually oxidizes the cell wall. It kind of like explodes the area that it hits into. It just explodes it. Mm. That's called oxi so, oxidization. So okay. So it's pretty damaging then for the cell. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, too much of that oxidative stress and the cell dies. It just completely disintegrates and dies. And, uh, yeah, we, then, then we start to age and get gray hair and, and all the things that oxidative stress does. And that's one benefit to the hydrogen. When you okay. breathe and drink the hydrogen, you, if you have any of these electronegative radicals that are floating around in your body, the hydrogen can help pick up some of those because it can get into places that other antioxidants cannot. Okay. So this is what, one of the reasons why it's so detoxing. Correct. Correct. Yes. That's probably been the number one thing I've experienced myself is the detox of doing the hydrogen. Like I'm detoxing pretty quickly, faster than I've, faster than I detox when I'm fasting with no food or juice, right? right. I'm detoxing eating and doing the hydrogen. I'm doing, I'm detoxing faster. Nice. And it's been wow. like, holy wow, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, I guess I have a question. Are you, are you using any detoxifiers for the, for the blood? Tell me what those are. Well, it, the, the, my favorite detoxer for the blood would be either like chlorella or clonoptilolite. Okay. I have done clonoptilolite uh, quite a bit in the past. What right? was your thoughts on it? I l freaking loved it. It helped remove. So I've struggled with um, uh, heavy metals in my mm -hmm. body to the degree that I haven't been able to wear earrings or necklaces because I'd break out in rashes ah. and my ears would just never would heal. Like years. We're talking eight years my ears never healed from being punctured right and i finally realized it was the metals and i've been tested for heavy metals and i had so many heavy metals so i did a clinoptolite product that just very quickly within probably four or five months i was testing completely different nice the heavy metals right nice. and had released a ton so that was really amazing um and then i started doing the hydrogen and the first thing i noticed was that heavy metal taste coming out yeah that same yeah. taste when I was releasing the heavy metals with clonoptolite, I was experiencing with the hydrogen. I, in my opinion, I think because the, the metals in our brain are the absolute hardest to detox from, I mm -hmm. think that that's maybe what you were tasting because I think that's what I have experienced too, is maybe some of the detoxing from the brain. That's amazing. Because if you, if you're breathing the hydrogen, it can automatically go past the blood brain barrier, right? Which is where we want it to go. Right. And tell why, why does it go past the blood brain barrier? And other well, because you're breathing that? it through your nose okay. and anytime you do anything through the nose, your blood brain barrier actually goes about right here. And oh. well, it, technically, I mean, if you eat something, it goes down, but the blood brain barrier is about here. And so anything that goes up the nose bypasses the blood brain barrier and you, and you get it a lot quicker. Wow. Okay. And also isn't the hydrogen a very tiny, teeny, tiny, it is molecule, so it can it does it have for like free access into the cell it does it has free access but by breathing it you're essentially just flooding your brain with all these antioxidants by drinking the water it has to go down into the blood process oh. then through the blood if it lasts because we know that hydrogen wants to to exit right within an hour so if you drink it are your hydrogen extra hydrogen molecules going to get processed in the body and get all the way up to the brain and still oh. be as good of an antioxidant I don't think got so. Got it. Yeah, got it. That's why it's so healthy to breathe it as well as drink it. Yep. That's awesome. Okay, so then um tell me how so the the we're I'm getting a ton more hydrogen into my body. Mm -hmm. How does that work on the pH scale? Well, it doesn't. That's the beautiful thing with hydrogen is because the hydrogen that you're breathing is pure hydrogen. Right. It doesn't change it's neutral. It's oh. pure, it it can just go right in. An individual sovereign entity, all of its own, every single one of them can go in, selectively pick any antioxidant or any oxidative or oxide that it finds, 
connect with it, turn it into water, and finish its its little. And then, do you just flush it out of your body with the water? I know, Correct. like I'm having detox stuff like coming out my skin. Yep, it doesn't hurt. None of it has hurt. I haven't had like the detox headache. I've had other pressures, but I was having those before the hydrogen, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but I've had detox like the heavy metals coming out. I've had like like um you know, breaking out with like little teeny tiny pimples. I know it's yep. just releasing from my skin. Yep. Like it's, and, and none of it hurts or nothing. It's just these little teeny tiny bumps, right? Like I'm just releasing like on such a big scale. I, I don't even I remember the question. I fully you. hydration is the cause of that. Okay. Be fully okay, hydrated. So full hydration. Yep. I don't think that we've experienced true so, hydration because of our environment and the, all the, uh, the oxidatives, well, or the mineral buildup or the trauma buildup or the stress. I call it all trauma because essentially that's what it is around the cells. So I think as a society, we, we're, we're not hydrated. Right. Just because of all the crap that's in, in our environment. Right, right. And, and so you're able to, with these antioxidants for the first time in your life or in my life, be fully hydrated. And so I used to not sweat very much. Mm -hmm. right? And I just thought it was a, it was a cool cool technique I learned, right? But no, it was because I hadn't drinking enough water. No, <laughs> I sweat, but it's, uh, but it's, but it's clear. It's clean. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good kind of sweat. It's, it's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Wow. This is amazing. So do you understand the pH scale? Do I need to go in more on that? I, I understand it? more of the pH scale. Um, I think what I was needing was more real life understanding of like examples right examples of how this works right so so talk to me a little bit more about the cell and the the buildup around the cell and why we get hydrate dehydrated like okay how so that work a lot of um a lot of people like salt you know right. hemp land yeah. salt sea salt table salt whatever well it is inorganic and we'll just take one one mineral, for instance, it's Himalayan salt. Everybody thinks, well, because it's Himalayan, it's it's got my minerals in it, so I can just put it all over my food. Well, that's incorrect because Himalayan salt is sodium chloride that has trace minerals in it, mm -hmm. but they're still inorganic. Those trace minerals, our body can't use them in that form. Our body can only mm -hmm. use organic minerals. And so when people put salt on their food, when they or or when they're eating their food that's that's had um, all kinds of uh, just environmental toxins, so as we eat that, what happens is the cell, hopefully a healthy cell, has four balanced electrolytes that are stationary in the cell, and when we drink food or water or when we eat or drink, the cells are looking to bring in the nutrients. They can really only bring in pure nutrients because of the osmosis factor that the uh, that the electrolytes create by sitting in the center of the cell their presence creates a sucking in inward does that make sense in the cell and so that's how the water gets from the outside of the cell inside the cell is because those four electrolytes are calling it in well they can only call okay. pure water if there's mineral okay. in the water then what happens is that mineral starts to impact all on the outside of that cell. And because so now, it's too big. Because it's too big. That is correct. And inorganic. So when you say inorganic, you're talking about minerals from like shell and rock and yes. that kind of stuff, right? Yes. And organic would be more from plants, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. So if you're going to get salt, real salt or sodium chloride, I don't even know if plants make it, but it would be green. It would be plant based mm. and it would be. Um, water soluble. You would actually put it in water and it would dissolve. That's the only yeah, kind of mineral okay. that our bodies can use. Even the sodium chloride that we put on our, our thing, that doesn't dissolve into a form that we can use. It dissolves into a form. And so you have your cell and all around that outside cell, all the way around. So if you can imagine a ring of scale, mm. right? Scale around your, your faucet and stuff like that. Yeah. And that scale going all the way around that cell. Now the electrolytes are on the inside. Two things can happen. They are still electrostatically trying to pull the pure water through, but now they have a barrier to pull the water through a brick wall, so to speak. Okay. To pull the water, the pure water through that brick wall. So they're trying to do that. 
but the brick wall that's around the cell has an electrostatic pole of its own. Mm. So it is holding the water on the outside of the cell because of its electrostatic pole. So what oh. happens is there's far more minerals on the outside of the cell that has built a brick wall on the inside of the cell because it's just a little cell has four. Oh. One of each of the electrolytes. So they 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 cannot overpower and pull this through. So the concrete wall on the outside wins and it gets all the water. The cell shrinks because what the cell is deciding to do is this wall that's built up around the outside, it can't get anything through that. So the cell to protect itself shrinks. Now there's an open area around the cell that it can absorb more minerals, but it can't because of this outer brick wall. So the cell shrinks, 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 shrinks. We get dehydrated. The cell dies. Oh, wow. That's fascinating, Roy. So then let's take the hydrogen completely out of it. If somebody were to just drink the, the distilled pure water, what does this do to the cell? Okay. So membrane around it. you've got your brick wall around the cell with right. your membrane on the inside and your four electrolytes. If you okay. drink distilled water, distilled water can actually go in and it sits all around here. Well, distilled water has its own electrostatic charge. It wants to dissolve these minerals that are around okay. the outside of the cell. Even though they're inorganic, we need them to start dissolving this brick wall be, and then we'll pee out all the inorganic minerals. But it's going to be a month or so before this wall is finally dissolved to where these guys that are inside the cell can actually start bringing pure water in again. Wow. Okay. So then now talk about how does hydrogen help that entire process? Okay. So how hydrogen helps is basically so you're hydrogenating the, the pure water. Right. So okay. basically you've got your brick wall around here. You've got your cell that has been shrinking, 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 right? The hydrogen going in basically pushes this cell back up because the cell doesn't realize by shrinking down, trying to create space, it's going to die. So the hydrogen holds the cell back up into its original template, hopefully while you're drinking water and dissolving this wall. So basically they're the rescuers that are holding the life here until the firemen can break through the wall and actually start hydrating the cell. That's okay, what the hydrogen So, so the, hydrogen can get, the, <laughs> the hydrogen can get through that yes. barrier, that brick wall. Yes. The reason why it can get through that brick wall, two reasons. One, it's so super small that it can just fly right through those minerals. And the other reason is, is it's a pure neutral atom with no charge of its charge own. Of its own. It's okay. Full, I like to call it sovereignty. Sovereignty. Oh, I love it. It's a sovereign molecule. Sovereign molecule. So it can go into the cell and it can enhance the cell and hold it up bigger until we've we've released enough of that barrier around that then that we can actually start absorbing our water correct we can start absorbing the the h2o because of the h inside okay because of the h inside we can start absorbing it oh that's beautiful okay wow i think i'm starting to understand <laughs> this good, is good, good. fabulous this is fabulous Okay. I'm like, okay, are there any other questions I want to ask or that, that anything coming up for you that wants to be asked or spoken about to help people understand this process a little better? I, yeah, I, I think that I've. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about, process. let's talk about food a little bit then. Okay. okay. So, so we've talked about getting our, our plant-based minerals. So there mm. are so many minerals out on the market, right? Yes. Yes. And I'm currently taking one that um, is plant-based mm -hmm. and I've loved it. And I've noticed lots of health benefits from that. But a lot of the, the minerals that you can take nowadays are not plant-based. Correct. Correct. Are all your, are all, do you know this? Are all your trace minerals not plant-based? When they say trace minerals, what do they mean by that? Well, trace minerals are minerals that are of a very, very small amount that we need. In okay. my research, though, in salts, the trace minerals are a little bit of the electrolytes uh -huh. that we need, but they're still inorganic. Okay. So, so you you can have an inorganic calcium and an organic calcium, inorganic sodium and organic sodium. So okay. you can have an organic and inorganic of all of it. 
One just happens to have formed in the mountain, and that's the inorganic. But somewhere along the line, a plant or an animal ate that rock and digested it and turned it to an organic through their through whatever process they did. Okay. And so that's why plants and animals are so important to us because we can't go eat the mountain. <laughs> plants but and animals can't. Plants and plants and animals can't. Technically, the plants, the animals don't, but the plants, the plants yeah. can't eat the mountain because they're hooked to the mountain. Their right. roots are there. There, that's where they have been des designed to get their minerals. Anyway. That's what I was, I was just going to ask. Like, I don't want to villainize inorganic minerals, right? And mm -hmm. so I was just going to ask you that. So this is beautiful. So the plants eat those inorganic minerals from right. the rocks and shells and that type of stuff. And then they, then we uptake the plant. Correct. And that gives us the kind of minerals that we can actually utilize in our body in a healthy Correct. way. Correct. I mean, that's, yeah, the, the plants do that on their own scale. But they also, they have a hard time of taking the, the many arrays and varieties of the inorganics. And so that's why the rhizosphere in the ground or the biosphere is so important for the bugs. Okay, because, tell me more about that. So there's, there's three different types of major uh, classes of bugs that are in the ground. Uh -huh. And each one eats the next one up. But the smallest one are like the protozoa. And so they will basically go, they'll sit on an inorganic mineral. And then their digestive tract is on the outside of their body. So they just excrete juices all over this mineral and it breaks the mineral down into the, into a aqueous solution that they can absorb. So then they oh. absorb it. Then the bigger bug is um, it's an anthropod. And so the anthropod comes over and eats the protozoa. Well, the anthropod is an exoskeleton, right? And so it eats this and, and through its digestion process, it builds all the inorganics up into the skeleton, which is now organic, right? So then this anthropod dies and then the plant says, oh, hey, look at all this beautiful calcium magnesium that's already in water soluble form. And so it starts picking up from the, the exoskeleton. Mm. So if we don't have those bugs in the ground, then our plants only pick up what the plant can convert. Because it's still not going to pick up, for instance, it's not going to pick up basalt. It's like 10 different forms of, of rock. It's, it can't do anything with that. But right, if I have big. a rice husk in the ground, that contains silica. When it rains, that plant would be able to pick the silica up from the rice husk because the rice husk is already organic. Mm. That makes sense? Yes. But it pick up the basalt. And so that's where we need the anthropods. The anthropods oh. go eat the basalt because they're big, tough mothers with their exoskeleton, right? <laughs> they <can do> <laughs> and then the plant eats the, the anthropod. What a beautiful balance to nature. Yes, but we don't have that balance. Right. Everywhere I've looked, that is imbalanced so far to the extreme that we're not getting the, the proper nutrients from the plants. And I've been telling everybody, get it from your plants. Right, but, but we don't, don't have, have it them. there because we're killing off the bugs. Exactly. Every time we till the ground, do you know that we kill instantly 50% with one till of the protozoa? 50% oh, dies the second it sees sunlight. Mm. Because the protozoa is not like us. We are supposed to eat organic stuff, and so we need sunlight. The bugs in the ground, they eat inorganic stuff, so they're on the opposite scale. They don't need the sunlight. In fact... If you cover it and cover it with mulch so that they never see the sun, they grow and they thrive because they're getting their sunlight from the exodus from the plant. So the plant right. gets the sunlight from the leaf, sends the sugars down into the roots. The roots secrete sugars called exodus and the bugs eat those. So they're still getting blessed by the sun. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So I know you've also done a lot of research and and experimenting with your own gardens and your own bugs and all of that kind of stuff to, to to be able to counteract this issue so what would be your top things for people to help get the nutrients into our plants like don't kill the bugs do you right. want to include bugs or do they naturally grow themselves like when you stop tilling when you stop um putting toxins on your soil yeah, I, I think that the bugs will find its way unless you're in an extremely toxic area. What I found was I my dirt in my garden was so rough, I had to jackhammer every single shovel out. I jackhammered yeah. out 
But then what I did is I brought in, excuse me, new new soil that I had made. It was some topsoil and some worm castings, and then a whole bunch of amendments that I put together, like rice husks for the silica, uh, different different things that I could put in there that would break down and create the minerals content that I wanted. Yeah. Because yeah. in my learning, uh, the schooling that I that I took, there is enough mineral in one grain of sand to mit to feed the mineral for an entire acre garden. If what? you knew how to get it out of the sand. Right. But we need bugs to do that. We need bugs to do that. And so there's enough fertilizer everywhere in the world. We don't need to add synthetic chemical fertilizers for nothing. All yeah. we need to do is grow the right kind of bugs that the earth wants to grow. We just need to feed them and get the environment so that they like it by not tilling and putting, mm -hmm. putting the right things in the soil. Um, you know, I do worm tea on a regular basis in the summertime mm -hmm. on my garden and all my trees on a weekly basis so that uh, they can have the nutrients that they need. I also do um, mycorrhizal fungi treatments. And so wow, my, that? how do you do that? Well, mycorrhizal fungi, you can buy, it's like 50 different uh, spores of fungus. Okay. And basically what it, what the, the idea is, is, is if you get the two, two tablespoons of this fungus and you mix it with like two or two or four gallons of water, you mix it and then you water your trees with that. What happens is those spores of the fungus, they go down into the ground and then they create a massive mycelium network. And what happens is that mycelium network, I don't know if you've ever seen one, but there's just oh, yes, I have. hairs that crisscross. Well, what they do is they shuttle nutrients. So if you build a mycelium network underneath, let's say a fruit tree, then you plant a fruit tree on top of that. As soon as the roots touch that mycelium network, now the roots of the tree are as big as the mycelium network. Because oh. that mycelium network shuttles nutrients. That's what it does. Wow. Shuttles That's nutrients beautiful. through the tree. So, so very intricate, uh, like freeway system. <laughs> exactly. I like to call them uh, tributaries or waterways. Oh, I love it. Yes. Underground waterways because it's essentially a root that inside that root, uh, inside and outside, it's just pumping sugars or food or, or fluids that, that they need. Anyway, it's a beautiful thing. If you don't have this yet, Roy, at some point, I would love to see like a, a, a writing, something written up of everything that you add to the soil mm -hmm. of your gardens and how you do it. Mm -hmm. And maybe you'll teach something on this at some point. Yes. I don't know how you're going to do this, but I want it. <laughs> right? yeah, well, I actually plan on doing um, as soon as springtime comes, I'm going to dig four more holes right out in the backyard and I'm going to do exactly everything that I'm telling you about. And do it all on camera. Uh, that oh, on, all on camera. And mm -hmm. are you just going to add that to your YouTube videos, or are you going to have it sort of be like a class only the people that registered? Well, no, you not know yet. I haven't decided on how I'm going to go that route yet. You know, I just got some some information yesterday on a on a business idea because mm. I was just thinking that I that I would like to generate a stream of income. Yeah, helping people. Yeah. And how, how would I do that? And so I was thinking that maybe I would, I know how to read water analysis very well. And most people don't know what's in their water. So oh. if I can offer them a cheap, fair, well, fairly inexpensive water test, mm -hmm. and then when they get the water test, I will read it to them, tell them exactly what it all means. And Dang, that's beautiful. on a case by case basis, if they're looking to actually treat it, I will tell them and what they need in order to treat it. Yeah. Essentially, I, I was thinking of just consulting on a on an individual basis, on a personal basis. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so let's say somebody, like definitely we want people gardening more, right? We definitely want people to start thinking about the bugs and doing healthy gardening, natural gardening. And there's so many methods out there already. People can learn this on their own. Really. Right. And I can't wait till you start putting your stuff out there. Right. Um, so, so all of that, but let's say you have somebody living in an apartment, they don't even have a, a deck to be able to grow things on. You know what I'm saying? What's the best way to get these minerals that our body needs? 
in plant-based form from a source that, it, it, you know, that we can actually yeah. uptake. You know, I thought about that and, and I run a, an experiment last spring just to see if I could uh, grow fruits and stuff in buckets. Yeah. It just didn't work very well. Now, granted, it was only one year and I was learning, but I was trying to figure out a way for people that live in apartments that that can't do that because that's a lot of people. And I think basically there, there's just no escaping putting it in the ground. You can't yeah. escape it. You've got to connect with, with nature again. And so if you live in an apartment or a condo or something that doesn't have the ground, then I think it's very prudent to go make friends with somebody that does have a piece of ground mm -hmm. and work together, uh, you know, on a quarter acre you could get 15 people that are, or 20 people that are working, that, that live in a condo. Mm -hmm. And if you all work on that on a quarter acre, you could grow so much food. Yeah, you, know, you, you could actually probably feed 40 people on a quarter acre if you did it right. And especially these days where food prices are, are on the mm -hmm. rise and right. even the organic food that you can get isn't really all that great for you. Like, Not organic. <laughs> we buy as much organic as possible like we do that and i and i can feel the difference like you know i've grown gardens and i've done it with no till and i love that and i can feel the difference between a tomato that's that way or an organically grown one that i got from the the, the grocery store is so different right i i've been in a place where i haven't been able to grow gardens now for two years mm. and it's been like oh, get me back to the earth Yo, yeah oh <laughs> yeah i totally want to grow. i want to get my hands in the dirt again you know and grow that food and be able to taste that ripe tomato that comes off of a, a plant that has not been in soil that's been tilled or you know that has healthy bugs and all of that in it you know like it's so different and it energetically feels so different and if it's truly vine ripened Yes. That is so, so important because you're getting the last final blessings of the sun. Oh, round it off. If it's vine ripe, the, the sun, the sun, the way it's constantly um, shining, like always, but the fruit in its stage, it doesn't pick up so much from the sun until its final ripening stage. Mm -hmm. That's when it really starts to pick up the sun because it uses the energy of the sun to actually start to to rot. I mean, the, the ripening process is a rotting process. Right. It actually uses the sun and starts to push all the sugars and everything to the outer edge, but the sun is what does that. And so if you're truly looking to be connected, then you should have uh, your fruit that has been grown right in the ground. That's been, that's been vine ripened by the sun because you're getting the best of, you know, the father and the mother. Mm, I love it. The balance, the balance, right? If you yeah. get all the mother, <laughs> right. it's going to be fine you're going to be loved but you're not going to have maybe some wisdom there that that <laughs> that, that you need to it's, add to the it's kind of like love without integrity that's right that's you right. know what i mean you know, i i call that uh light love yeah light, light love, love and then love with integrity is love light mm. and it's the best as far as i'm concerned to have the balance of the two yes right well to have the balance of the light and the dark the the shadow and the, you know what I mean? The bright, right? The father, the mother, the masculine, the feminine, to have the balance of the two in harmony is is where it's most beautiful. I've, I even had this analogy pop in, like the two most beautiful times of day are sunrise and sunset. Why? Mm. It's because we have such a beautiful balance of the dark and the light. And right. everybody wants to go out and witness, you know, the sunrises and the sunsets. And, and it's because it's in my, my story altogether. It's because it's in balance. It's yeah. that wholeness we're looking for within ourselves. Yeah. I love it. You know, the sun's electric and the earth is magnetic. So together it's an electromagnetic. Mm. So, you know, yeah. I was reading this yesterday in my uh, book of light that I'm reading uh -huh. and it's talking about uh, sun gazing. If you truly mm. want to reconnect all the circuits in the body then you need to copy the Sphinx. The Sphinx is all fours on the earth and it's facing the rising sun. Oh, wow. I've never heard yeah, of I'd never heard of that, but he said that the fours. Sphinx is showing all fours and not just hands, whole palms and legs and on everything because we're trying to connect a bigger, the more to the ground we can connect, the more we can receive from the light. And wow. everything that we receive is through here. Wow. What he's actually saying, this is, this is, I'm going to learn more about it, but what he's actually saying is that 
obesity does not come from overeating. And he has a pretty darn uh, interesting analogy to, to prove that. So when you sprain your ankle, does it get bigger or littler? Well, it swells and gets bigger. It swells and gets bigger. When you have congestive heart failure, does it get bigger or littler? Right. Okay. When a thicker. star dies, does it get bigger or does it get littler? Yeah. The red dwarf gets way bigger. So right. everything, his, his, so his uh, claim on this is as we lose energy, as we are dying, we get bigger first. Hmm. And so he said it, I mean, he says it has nothing to do with food, but I think it has some to do with food, but a lot of <laughs> the, the light that goes into our eyes is the signals to tell our bodies how to process the food. That's what I think. And because if, and if you're like on a computer screen, the blue light actually shuts the ATP production in the cell down. And that's, that's opposite from what we want. We want ATP production. Right. So. Wow. 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 So I, I look at it more as like balance, 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 balance. So, so you're talking about sun gazing and how that goes in and, and feeds us. Mm -hmm. What was the reason you brought that up? There was something. Well, because we were just talking about the sun and rebalance in the electrical circuits. Right. And we probably don't get enough sun. So those are the times of days we can actually receive direct sunlight into our eyes is, is very, very, when it's first coming up and when it's going all the way down, which we're called to those times of days anyway, to be with the sun. Right. I find right. that very fascinating. Yeah. F five o'clock in the morning is when you're, when the, the infrared comes in, the infrared comes in for about 30 minutes before the sun comes up. Those are the, those are the rays that you really, really try to get. In fact, the oh. yogis actually say that those rays actually have the instructions for the day. Oh, that's, that's what, that's what they say. So if you really want instructions from the higher realm for the day, get up at five and go outside and you have to connect circuit circuitly. Yeah. Circuitly connect to the earth. And then uh -huh. you'll see the infrared rays because the infrared rays are, are, well, some of them are red and red balance blue. Oh, okay. And blue light is our computer screens. Right. Blue light shuts, shuts down certain productions. Blue light actually shuts down vitamin A production in our bodies. Vitamin A is yellow. So when you go out and get yellow sunlight, you start getting vitamin A and vitamin D. Mm, interesting. So I, I just scratch in the surface of this of this uh, lecture, but it's pretty interesting. Yeah, you're going to go way deeper, I can tell. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, he's a doctor. He's a neuroscience scientist, and he's been lecturing this since 2017. He's got a lot of work. So okay. I got a lot, of, a lot of researching to do because light, if light truly is everything, then I, that's uh, something that I can't just neglect. I need to understand it. Right, right, right. Especially I enjoy sun gazing. And I've all often wondered why I couldn't gaze here where I'm at, but I could if I was in Phoenix. And he explained it perfectly. In why? certain certain angles of the of when the sun comes up, certain areas receive sunlight at different angles. And so some places you can sun gaze better and get more of a spectrum of rays. Other places you can't. He was actually given the lecture in Vermont. And he's like, I'm sorry, guys, but you guys have about six minutes to sun gaze in Vermont. That's it. You're only <laughs> going to get the spectrum for six minutes. But in Phoenix, you can get a whole hour in the morning and, a, and an hour at night. Oh, wow. And that's probably like, one of the reasons why you feel so cold there. Yeah, no wonder. It's because I can, yeah, I can be more uh, light absorbent. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so fascinating. And so what do you do like when you've got like today, 28 inches of snow on the ground? Well, you know what I mean? I asked my guides exactly that in a kind of a complaining tone. I'm just yeah. like, you guys tell me I need more sun. Phoenix <laughs> has more sun, right? And they're like, <laughs> the same sun is above you as that's above Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. Ah, dang it. And, and we're not <laughs> such limited beings that we can't connect with Earth just because there's two right. feet of snow outside. We can still connect. We can take a bath. The bath mm -hmm. is, is warmed water that came right from the Earth. It's got the negative charge that, that Earth does. So it yeah. can ground us and the sun, the photons go right through the clouds. They still come in. It's the intention. Yeah, I agree. When the sun is shining and you walk out there and say, oh, bless me. Your intention is to bring in the, the sunshine. So it does. But yes. if you walk out, if you're complaining and saying, I don't see the damn sun anywhere. Well, the sun's going to be like, screw you. I ain't getting you any of my golden. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you've just like put this barrier up between you and right. the sun. Right. right. I'm guessing you can receive a lot more sun. First off, when you believe you can see it. And second off, if you're grateful for it. 
Right. And remote view it. Oh, I never thought of that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> when I really need the sun, I just remote view it. That's fabulous, Roy. So I, I mean, I got to have it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you're a sun baby. I'm a sun sure. baby. Yep. Yeah. I'm Come sure down, be out there and, and that's, that's why I do the videos that I do is to teach people why I have gone as extreme as I've gone to be organic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, Roy. And I understand so much more than I did before. And good. so I'm super, super grateful. Good, yes. good. So one last question, because okay. I just popped in to ask, and then I'll, I'll, we can wrap this up. With the hydrogen, right? When I'm doing the hydrogen water with distilled water, it makes me so flipping hungry. Do you have any thoughts around this? And maybe you haven't encountered this one yet. So maybe oh, you, yeah. you know what I mean. I get hungry. You would know. I get really hungry after I've been breathing for like a, <laughs> an hour and a half. If I get, if I do a meditation or something on there and I drink a quart of water, I am just famished when I'm done. I don't yeah. know why. Okay. Honestly, I don't know why. I, uh, I could guess. <laughs> and I, I just say in that, that probably because you've you've elevated your spirit and you and you've eaten eaten probably much better than you normally do, and so your body's craving stuff. I don't know. I know that yeah. because of the hydrogen in the water, I was eating like an ice cream sandwich from time to time because I still like yeah. my a sugary treat, but right. not, not anymore. I haven't had, and I'm trying to get rid of candida. I right. I haven't had any sugary things for well two weeks since I started the candida. Nice, 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 nice. But, okay. but I really want some good food. Right. <laughs> well, my my initial thing was is because I, I meditate in the morning, so I was meditating with the hydrogen and then immediately wanting to eat. But normally I fast until noon to two, right? And and that was doing pretty good. And so my initial thought was, dang, I'm going to start gaining weight, right? But I haven't. I've actually dropped weight. And uh, I've actually wanted to eat more healthy more fruits and vegetables, not less. You know what I mean? I've actually w wanted the other stuff less, even mm -hmm. though I still want it and I still eat it sometimes, I'm wanting it less. Right. So, and and I'm dropping weight still. And I'm like, okay, I guess that's fine. <laughs> if I'm well, eating you know and still dropping weight. You know what I've found works for me now that I don't eat any kind of a junk food? If I'm hankering or I'm hungry, a quart of hydrogen water, and then I'll take like 10 spirulina capsules, and mm. like I've got my moringa powder put in capsules because you can't overdose on it and it's just good. So, and then yeah. I also have another green spectrum drink that's just got a whole range of stuff, but I don't like the taste of it. So I capsule it. Yeah. So I'll drink a quart of hydrogen water with like maybe 15 or 20 green drink capsules. That's oh, a wow. meal. Yeah, that is a meal. Open, I mean, that's a full meal. And so I'll do that. I'll do my smoothie in the morning, a, a full green drink, and then maybe three more of those throughout the day, quarts of water with a handful of green supplements. And that's, that's pretty much all I eat now. Wow. 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 Okay. I'm going to have to look into some more of that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Roy, for being Ooh, willing perfect. to share all this and let me pepper you with questions. It helped me understand. And maybe on our next one, I'll have some slides show you some different, uh, uh, some synthetic clinoptilolite and some natural clinoptilolite and stuff like that. Okay. That would be fun to, fun to do another one. I'm sure we will. Cool. Sounds good. Hey. Okay. We'll talk to All you right. later. Thanks, Ray. Okay. Right. Bye.